Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about customizing your workspace. It's always a good idea to set up your workspace so that it's familiar to you, so that you're comfortable with it. So first of all, what you can see here is my workspace. First thing I want to show you is if you go into under window, you're going to notice something here called the application frame. This puts your entire workspace into a single application frame. If I turn it off, you will notice that everything here is its individual floating panel. Okay, and you can see my desktop behind. Some people may like this, some people may not. The reason I don't like it is if I accidentally click over here, it's going to minimize my InDesign and go to the desktop. Sometimes it comes in handy, sometimes it gets a little bit annoying. I like to make sure everything is within one single application frame. So when I go to resize it, the entire pro program resizes with it. Okay, oops, wow, that's a little bit much. Okay. And since I like to make the most of my screen real estate, I'm just going to go ahead and make this as large as it can. Now we did talk a little bit about your windows and your workspaces. Let's go ahead and switch it to the essentials workspace so that we're all on the same page. I'm going to go ahead and reset my essentials so it's back to its default with its just basic essential panels that it has over here. Now we did talk about our tools panel and how you can change it to the double column or the single column. Now even though you cannot adjust the position of the individual tools, you can adjust where your tools panel actually goes. Uh, you can put it over on the right side or the left side. You, you'll notice that there's a big blue line right here way over here that I can drop it off. But I'm just going to go ahead and keep it on the left hand side for now. And under here, under workspaces, you'll know the, notice that we have a bunch of different default workspaces that have already been set up. Let's say you go into your essentials and any of these panels can be moved. You will notice right here if I click on this gray area I can click and drag it to the left and actually take it out of its set of panels which is called a dock. This double dotted line right here means it's an individual shelf. So I can drag out these individual panels and I can even combine them. You'll notice this thick blue line showing me where it's going to go. I can put it within a single shelf or I can connect it to it on its own shelf. I can combine these different panels into different shelves and I can bring them in and out of this dock. I can even add a separate dock off to the left for secondary panels if I wish. Underneath the windows you will notice that all the panels are available here. For example, I can click on the effects panel and you can see it appears to do with or place wherever I wish. I can put the effects in with my pages panel and I can pull it out and, and I can also even resize it. You'll notice this double arrow right here will expand and collapse it so that it shows all of its attributes. You'll also notice that you have your panel options here which show additional options based on each individual panel. Let's say I've just basically messed up my essentials workspace and I don't really like it and I would like to go back at any time I can go Windows Workspace Reset Essentials. Underneath the window we have all of the different panels that are available. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and customize my workspace using the panels that I use frequently and getting rid of the ones I use seldom. For example, this links panel right here, I don't use it very often, so I'm just going to drag it out here and you'll notice I have this little X in the corner. If I click on the X, I can just get rid of it. Okay, My stroke and my color I use quite a bit, so I'm going to keep them. However, my swatches and my color are very similar, so I'm going to go ahead and throw my swatches up there. And you notice this thick blue line shows me where it's going to go. I'm going to go ahead and put my swatches with my color all in the same shelf. Then I have my pages and my layers. I usually take my layers and drag it clear to the bottom and have it in a shelf all of its own. My align and pathfinder I use really quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to open up my align and pathfinders. I'm just going to throw those in there too put it in between these two shelves. And I want my pathfinder and my align to be in the same shelf together. Also another one that I use, I use a lot of styles, mostly my character styles and my paragraph styles. So I'm going to click on my character styles and I'm going to click and drag that and put it in its shelf all of its own and I'm going to throw my paragraph styles 
in the same one. My text wrap I'm going to use quite a bit, plus my type. So I'm going to use my character. If I Notice how when I click on it, it opens up. I'm going to go ahead and make a shelf with my character. And my paragraph. I'm going to throw that in with my character since I use it quite a bit. Now I have a shelf with my paragraph styles and character styles plus my character and paragraph. Let's go ahead and move the paragraph on top so it's like my styles. It's consistent. Also my text wrap I'm going to use quite a bit so I'll grab that and I'll just throw it in. What the heck I'll throw it in here with my paragraph and characters. So these are some of the panels that I generally use. Let's say down the road we actually do plan on using that links palette that I got rid of, but not as often. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a separate row of panels for my secondary panels. Plus another thing that I can do is I can grab the left side and move it towards the icon and I can shrink this down so that I don't see the name. It'll snap right here so all I see is the icon. And I'm familiar enough with these icons right now that I do not need to see the name. So I'm going to grab this guy, shrink it down a little bit. It's going to snap so that all I do is see the icons. If by some chance I don't know what those icons are, I can always just put my mouse over it and it will tell me what the individuals are. And I can add a third panel or fourth or whatever. But again, it's still, see all this wasted space. So I'm going to go ahead and take that links out here and get rid of it. So now I have it nice and I can always expand it if I want by clicking on this double arrows which expands all my individual panels showing me my options and then I can reduce it. But now I've just got my icons over here and these are the ones that I use most frequently. Now if I went to my essentials and click reset essentials it'd go back to the essentials and I'd lose all this. I want to save it for future use. So what I can always do is I can go up to window and workspace and you'll notice right down here it says new workspace. If I click on that I can name it anything I would like. We'll just go ahead and name it temporary for now and we click OK. If I go into my windows and my workspace now you'll notice I have my temp workspace. I just want to point out that I do have a previously saved custom workspace which I'm going to click on it right now and you'll notice that the panels do change and it'll be really quite a bit similar to what we just saw. So I don't really need my my temp anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my temp, temporary, and then I'm going to go down here to workspace and I'm going to say delete workspace. It's going to say are you sure you want to delete your workspace? You select I want to delete temp. Yeah I, I want to delete that one. So I'm going to delete it since I already had a previously created workspace which is called Mel's workspace. And You can name it anything that you'd like. Now you'll notice right here I ha still have the name of my panels. I don't really necessarily want that. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down and what I have to do is I have to save that. So I go down here to window and usually it should say something like save workspace. But InDesign doesn't really work that way. What we're going to do is we're just going to go new workspace and this time what we're going to do is we're going to name it the same. And if it is the same it'll say you already have one named that. Do you want to replace it? Well sure I want to replace it. So now you will notice that it doesn't show my the names of my panels but if I go into workspace there it is Mel's workspace along with and of course just like any other panel if I drag this out and say oh I don't want that one drag this out don't want this one uh, let's stretch this out and let's make our pathfinder into a secondary panel I just messed everything up just like any other workspace I can go over here and say reset Mel's workspace and it'll go back to the saved another thing that comes in handy is you can access your workspaces under this window menu but if you notice on the right hand side we have up here in our application bar all of the individual workspaces as well or our menu bar so we can choose it from there and do everything from there which is a little bit easier than going to window workspaces so that's basically how you create a custom workspace I would encourage you to do so because you can find your tools so much more efficiently than using the preset workspaces and if I'm working on a typography intensive project I can always still switch to the typography workspace and get all of the panels that it provides. I can even adjust it and save it over my typography uh, workspace. It's faster just to do it this way. Go back to my Mel's workspace. Okay, that's how you make and save your custom workspaces.